work out the example of the Fourier transform of the Gaussian. So this is a famous and important example for multiple reasons. e to the minus ax squared, where a is positive, so that we have a decaying Gaussian. So we are going to um, do this a little bit indirectly. So from the definition, we have the Fourier transform of this function is going to be the integral over r of e to the minus ax squared e to the ixx dx. <coughs> but instead of trying to compute that uh, explicitly and directly, we're going to do something a little bit different. We'll take the derivative of u hat and use this to set up a differential equation for u hat so that we can solve it that way instead. So in the so we're going to be differentiating under the integral sign, which we presume is uh, allowed, and we'll you can look back afterwards and justify it. The only c shows up in this this latter part right here. So when we differentiate, it's going to kick out a factor of i x. And now if you look at this portion. Uh, you see that's essentially the derivative of the Gaussian there. We just need to uh, get the i out of the way. And I guess if we differentiate that Gaussian, it's going to kick out a factor of 2a as well. So if I take that 1 over 2ai and put it out in front, then the stuff that's left inside is um, precisely ddx of e to the minus ax squared. Um, and the reason why that's useful is because we can recognize uh, this integral here as being the definition of the Fourier transform of the derivative. So, <coughs> excuse me, so this thing right here is the thing being Fourier transformed. OK, and we know uh, how the Fourier transform behaves with respect to derivatives. So we can use that rule to say, oh, well, that's just going to throw out a factor of minus i c. And then what's left is going to be the Fourier transform of e to the uh, negative ax squared, which is exactly the guy that we're looking for. So this gives us, so let's see, so we can cancel those i's. And we have that um, u hat prime is equal to c over 2a u hat. And so this equation is separable. And you can go ahead and solve it. And we find that u hat is equal to um, some constant times e to the minus c squared over 4a. All right, now, appealing to the fact that when we evaluate u hat at 0, this is one of the few values for which we can actually uh, integrate the Gaussian. So in this case, the e to the i x e x part drops out, and we just have the integral of the Gaussian. And so then it's a famous result that uh, The answer is square root of pi over a. So that tells us what uh, u hat is. So it's uh, an interesting thing to notice that the Fourier transform of a Gaussian is, again, uh, another Gaussian. And so in fact, if, um, if we take the right value of it, so the fact that e to the minus ax squared corresponds under Fourier transform to this guy, um, <coughs> if we take a equal to a half, then we end up with 
uh, e to the minus x squared over 2 corresponding to square root 2 pi e to the minus c squared over 2. So that's sort of the, the most symmetric you can get. You're, you're stuck with this factor of uh, root 2 pi one way or the other. Um, but the interesting sort of trade-off here back and forth between the two is that if a gets bigger over here so that you have a really concentrated uh, value for the Gaussian, then over here it's going to have the opposite effect and it's going to smear it out. And so you have this trade-off between localization. Um, you cannot simultaneously localize information on both sides of the Fourier transform. This has a, a very famous uh, implication in physics where uh, it turns out that the um, position and uh, momentum wave functions are, are uh, conjugate variables, meaning that they're Fourier transforms of each other. And as a consequence, it's impossible to localize information about both of them simultaneously. And so this is called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle.